so Jake Paul is 27. Mike Tyson is 57? 58, yeah. Uh, okay, so they're fighting. Now, what are the rules of this fight? What is going on? There's so many, like, rumors about it. What, tell us what the deal is. The short answer is it has not been determined yet because who determines it is the state of Texas. And MVP, which is Jake Paul's promotional company, has not yet gone through the machinations of seeking whatever approval they're going to seek for this fight. What, what I do know are two things. One, there will not be headgear involved. This is okay. something that I've been told from the promotional side, so no headgear in this fight. And two, I have been told that this under no circumstances will be sanctioned as a regular fight, right? So it will not go on Mike Tyson's professional resume. It will not go on Jake Paul's professional record. There's no way Texas is going to allow it to be a fight. So anything in between is kind of up for debate. I think a good blueprint for what to expect is what we saw with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones in California back four years ago, where it was not a sanctioned, but they did do, what was it? I think six two minute rounds or eight two minute rounds. And they did not have to use headgear. And it was scored on some level, not officially, but it was scored by judges that were sitting ringside. I, I think that a close approximation of what to expect from Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. If I remember correctly, Roy Jones did a lot of staying away and there were only punches to the body. And Jones was saying, well, Tyson was taking a lot more seriously than I did. Is that what I, rem do yeah, I remember? That yeah, that, yeah, it was. I mean, I remember watching that and thinking that if Mike really wanted to dial it up, it could have knocked Roy out. Now, Roy, at that point, you know, even though he's younger, was more washed than, than Mike was. I mean, Mike, I mean, even now you can tell he's in pretty good shape and he, you're always going to possess some level of power if you're a, a former or heavyweight champion. It definitely seemed like Mike was pulling his punches there a little bit towards the end because he didn't want to just blast Roy out of there. So it looked like Mike had something left in the tank. But again, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Roy was heavy, slow. And if you remember the end of Roy's professional boxing career, Roy was very chinny. I mean, Roy got knocked out a lot at the end. So I think that was as much about Roy as it was Mike. Is there any incentive for them to try since it doesn't go on their professional record? Like, what's the incentive for the two of them to, like, hurt each other? It's a good question because I guess the incentive is not to humiliate themselves in front of the largest audience boxing has seen in decades, right? Because I think the audience is going to tune in. You know, 40 million, 50 million maybe more watching this fight on Netflix, which is going to do, I'm sure, an incredible job marketing it leading up to July 20th. You know, I talked to Lou DiBella, who's a longtime boxing promoter over the weekend, and I was asking him about, you know, filling up AT&T Stadium in Dallas. He's like, oh, I think they can do it. You know, I think they can get, you know, 60,000 fans inside that building, you know, for one fight night because of the names of Mike Tyson and Jay Paul. So if you have that kind of television audience and you have that kind of in-person audience, you're going to be motivated to at least have a good showing there. What that ultimately looks like, I don't know, but I don't think it will just be, you know, two guys kind of pawing at each other, you know, getting through a six round fight. Okay, so Fred has worried about this because you don't want to see Tyson embarrassed, but, and I'm kind of of the same thought process here that it doesn't matter if he still possesses that knockout power as a former heavyweight champion. At his age, it's all about conditioning. And will yeah. he be able to have the legs and the lungs to stay in there long enough to, you know, hopefully, you know, not embarrass himself or maybe even do some damage as compared to somebody who's 30 years younger than him? Yeah, the short answer to that is no, he, he doesn't. He's almost 58 years old and he smokes weed every day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what are, we, we can't, like, like we, we cannot expect him more than the first 20 or 30 seconds of every round to be anything but an old man in the ring. I mean, we're all going to be watching God knows how many Instagram videos of Mike hitting the pads. That's great. But show me the video of the next 30 seconds. Show me the video of the next minute when, you know, Mike Tyson is exhausted and, and trying to, to recover, you know, from those quick flurries that he's throwing. The, the fear that I have is that Jake Paul, who regardless of what you think about him, he can punch. Like, Jake has a great right hand. Like, if Jake somehow gets clipped with something that energizes him, he throws a big right and he puts Mike Tyson down. That's not impossible here. It's not. I mean, Mike Tyson, at the end of his pro career, was getting beat up and knocked out. 
you know? I mean, and that was almost 20 years ago when he was last formally in the ring, you know, against a, a quote unquote real fighter. Jake Paul is not championship level by any stretch. But he's not but terrible, yeah. He's, he's not, not bad, terrible, but, yeah. and power is his strength. Like, he does have power. So if Jake Paul dials one up and throws a big right hand at Mike Tyson, I don't know what happens there. Believe me, nobody. Yeah, I, probably including Jake Paul, wants to see Mike Tyson flat on the canvas, a senior citizen knocked out. So it might be Jake Paul that pulls punches in this fight. I think that's realistic. I, I do. I think that's... Look, it's a difficult dance they're going to have to do here because, again, you don't want to make it goofy to make the audience, you know, in-person audience... Hurt. Because it would hurt Jake Paul's career. Yeah. Because this is going to be his biggest audience because I wouldn't pay for the fight. But if it's on Netflix and I'm around, I'll watch it. And I'll yeah. certainly watch it when it's clipped on the internet if I don't watch it live. So my incentive to make Jake Paul, because, you know, I'm almost 50. So Jake Paul, like, I didn't, like, you know, I don't care about him. I also like that he's the villain in a fight against a convicted rapist. But the, uh, <laughs> the you know, I mean, that's odd. That shows us where we're at. Well, and, and <laughs> it's like saying, oh, but, you know, Tyson fans, and it's like, oh, hold on a second. You can be enamored with Mike Tyson being on planet Earth, but to be an actual fan of his, there's, you know, that well, not uh, not too long ago history that you should probably take well, into yeah, account. So, but I'm not going to judge anyone when I'm watching. I mean, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, it's a curiosity. There's no doubt about yeah. it. But, like, you know, Jake Paul can't, like Chris said, like, Jake Paul has to put on a show or I'll never watch it again. Like, if you have 50 million eyes on you and you want to sell other fights you know, to people, people are, my age, people you're going to have to. starving for good boxing entertainment. Like, for instance, Francis Ngannou, who fought Tyson Fury well because Fury didn't take him seriously. Chris, what happened to him the last time out? Oh, just obliterated the way it was supposed to go against Tyson Fury. Just absolutely annihilated in two rounds. Yeah, what's his name? Anthony Joshua hit him twice on the chin and literally knocked him out with one punch to the face. Yeah. And Gano is a very large individual. Well, I thought he's he not killed a boxer. Him. I yeah. thought he killed him. Looked like it. I thought that he might have really seriously hurt him. All right, uh, go is ahead. Is Tyson going to be uh, better served by training with Maynard James Keenan in his uh, jiu-jitsu dojo? I read this yesterday. Yeah. The guy I mean, cool. I don't care who you put in the corner of Mike Tyson. He will ultimately still be a 58-year-old man who smokes weed every day. <laughs> Like, let's not, like, dismiss this. This is who Mike Tyson is. He has had a remarkable second act of his life, right, where, you know, he ended his boxing career in the ring, talking to Jim Gray, saying, I'm doing this because I'm broke. Now he is a podcaster, a weed peddler, and still one of the biggest draws in boxing today. That fight against Roy Jones Jr. did over a million pay-per-view buys. Over wow, a million with crazy. Tyson and Roy Jones. This fight with Netflix, even though it, it might not get to, like, 80, 90 million, which I first thought, it, it'll exceed... 40 million viewers, which for boxing is an astronomical number. And Chris, people can dismiss it, but you, I, John, Hardy, everyone listening has heard of this fight. Like, we've all heard of it. And you can dismiss it any way you want, but it's part of the public consciousness. What it does, it tickles two kind of demographics, right? Like you have the boxing fans who know Mike Tyson and every boxing fan on the planet. And that's another part of this, like the global audience. Netflix has a global audience of 260 million subscribers. The global audience knows who Mike Tyson is, so they're going to be tuning in to watch it. And all the influencers that usually just watch Jake Paul on YouTube and all these kids, they know who Jake Paul is. So they're going to be subscribed to Netflix if they're not already, and they are going to be watching. That's what's going to make this fight so enormous. Yeah, my kids know Jake Jake Paul and, and know about it, and I, of course, Mike Tyson. Chris Mannix, read him in Sports Illustrated. He's basketball, he's boxing, he's everything else. Thank you for the time, sir. You got it, guys. All right, Thanks, we appreciate Chris. it. There you go, Chris Mannix. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Toucher and Hardy here.